So with all these bowling options that you have, I'll I'll I'll, I'll add Chris Wokes to this list also because I'm a huge fan mm. of Chris Wokes. So like keeping injuries aside, and you have all these fast bowlers at your disposal, would you rather play your best bowling options or would you opt for the rotation policy? Because of how injured our players get, the rotation policy makes sense for them. I'd I love I'd love to play our best bowlers. Like India can play Siraj, Shami, uh, Sharma, Bumrah. Yeah, I'd love that, but it's not going to happen because our players they don't eat enough roti and dal, and that's the problem because <laughs> they need to eat more of that to have the strength, and then they can they can have less of these stress fractures. Because I I don't understand what's happening because these are fit athletes. But they yeah. keep getting injured. So I think rotation policy is the best for England at the moment. Yeah. But, 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 but. Let's come to the batsman now. Josh Butler, when he came to India, he played one test and then he was sent back to England for the next three tests and he came back for the T20s, which was irrelevant, to be honest. Which was very irrelevant. Okay, you can say that the next T20 World Cup was going to be played in similar conditions, so he needed to get acclimatized. But he's Josh fucking Butler. He's the best opening batsman in the world. He can come to <laughs> UAE, play against other sides and score well, even if he doesn't play the five T20s. He could very well play for the next three tests that he missed and, you know, take in a rest in those T20s. So, what do you have to say about that? I'll be honest with you. I think Josh Butler might be finished with the test side, genuinely. And the reason I think that is because there's other wicket keepers who are better than him behind the stumps. And I think ben that's Fox. what they're yeah. going to go for. Ben Folks is quite good. Even Bairstow, who is not really a wicket keeper, I think he's better than Butler, if I'm being honest with you, behind the stumps. Right? Yeah. Um, and also, in tests, Bairstow gives you more as a batsman than Butler. Butler's good if the team's playing well. And let's say the team's, I don't know, 352 for, for three or for four or five. You let Josh Butler go, he'll get you a quick 80. It's, I'm not saying he's like Bunt, but Bunt in that regard is a very good counter-attacking batsman. So yeah. Butler doesn't really have that. But when it comes to India as well, Bunt, if India are like 350 for four, five, six, whatever, he'll go and he'll smash it. So yeah. I think Butler's finished for tests, sorry, and I hate to say it, my brother, but I think he's finished. That's a very bold call you're making. Yeah, but I mean, done. I'm hoping he isn't finished because I like Josh Butler. I don't necessarily like him as a test batter, but just as a batter, you feel for him. If, you feel for any guy if you tell to him that your test career is over. I mean, that's pretty yeah, sad. Yeah, but I think when Ben Stokes said that he's batting at six and also Sam Curran in the likes of being in the test squad, I don't think England really need a Butler. Mm. I mean, I my maybe. problem wasn't specifically with Butler. I was talking about the policy that English cricket was following at that time with Besto is playing two tests, Butler is playing I one test. Pitch. All these, yeah. I, I was Moeen specifically Ali. referring to that thing, not Josh Butler, yeah. Even Moin Ali had come just for the test series or something like that. Some, some weird things were happening in the English cricket. Pro- possibly <laughs> it was because of uh, because they had to stay in bubbles and they were playing what 15-16 yeah. tests in that 2020-21 year. And possibly it was because of that. But even then, you could argue that you're playing against the best side in the world. You have a 1-0 lead hmm. in India. Yes. Why do you then not capitalize on that lead and, you know, ask your players to stay just for that extra two or three matches and then you promise them that you'll be given rest in the, you know, the T20Is or the limited overs, whatever was to come next. I mean, I think that that should have been done because test cricket for me is always going to be the top form of cricket and if any team has to stake their claim as the best team in the world they have to do well in tests I agree I agree but what I what I find interesting is Soham mentioned uh, Sam Curran I have to ask Soham do you think Sam Curran is is the player for the English test side honestly yeah why not as an Indian cricket fan I'm really scared of Sam Curran in a test side why in you... English conditions I would say yes in overseas conditions you'd have to think yes. much about it yes you'd have to correct. think about it Correct. I think, I, I think, I think all three of us could be amazing in English conditions with the seam. Oh my God! You think you think it's Jimmy Anderson? You know, Glenn McGrath. We'd be amazing, you know. But I think Sam Curran. It's good because England need a left armor. Left armors yeah. are. I don't know what it is. It's the angle. It's what they bring that's different to yeah. cricket. But 
overseas, I don't think Sam Curran would be good enough. I genuinely don't think he'd be good enough. I hope he proves me wrong, yeah. but I don't think he'd be good enough. But I like I like the fact that someone mentioned him because I think he's he's very talented, that boy. Very talented. I'm pretty sure in was it in the one day internationals where uh I think India won three two, right? Um yeah. But uh yeah, I, I don't remember. I only remember I think it's three two, but Sam Curran nearly won. I think it was the last game. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I remember, I remember, I remember. He Sam scored Curran. a ninety or something. Yeah. Oh my god, that was amazing. Like I was like, how are we gonna win this? Like, what the hell? But um yeah. yeah, Sam Curran, I think at home, let's get let's let him go against uh New Zealand, which by the way, that'll be a very hard test series. I don't know why people are thinking it's gonna be an easy one, because that's gonna be tight. Yeah. yeah, it is going I to be. I think New Zealand are better than England in English conditions. <laughs> I'm just putting it out there. No, I agree. I think they're amazing, New Zealand. Like, I saw him, consider you that, like considering that batting, both of the teams batting, I would also agree. But with every test match being just as important. And Macklem joining so late as a new coach. Okay, there's just eight nine days remaining for the series. Oh, oh no. what do you think? How are the te- how is the team going to adjust with Macklem at the helm? Are these nine ten days enough? No, they're not enough. Especially when you have a coach like him. He's very different to yeah. previous coaches. And um, I think the one thing with McCullum is he will have the respect of the dressing room straight away because of what he's achieved in cricket. So that won't be a problem, but it'll take time to adjust. And also, having New Zealand as your first series is tough, man. Like yeah. they're they're so good. Like you said, Surya just said in English conditions, very very good. So honestly, Soham, I'm not looking forward to it. But if there's one person that could make a massive difference, it is Ben Stokes. So let's see what happens. Yeah, they're the world yeah. champions for a reason, right? Also, yeah. since we're talking about you know uh, short spans of time for the coaching to get rid- uh, for the players to get registered to the coaching so in july england is playing 15 days out of 31 like they're playing test cricket or limited overs cricket and the india tour ends on 17 and south africa tour starts on 19 so we talked about england playing 15 16 test matches pre- in the previous year so again you see this kind of scheduling so, uh, do you feel that the players are, you know, under a lot of pressure nowadays to play a lot of matches? And that's why probably what England did pre- uh, previously made sense because, you know, now they're playing so many matches. Like, this is just too much cricket. You're playing one series on 17th, like your series is ending on 17th and then you're starting a new one on the 19th. Like, isn't that too much cricket? Maybe, but we shouldn't feel sorry for these bachare because the problem is, at the end of the day, they're professional cricketers and they wait the whole summer for the few months of sunshine they get in this lovely country. And yeah. they, the problem is the, the schedule gets condensed. But do you know the other problem as well, boys? The When they've got the 100 now playing, it means the form, the, 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 the schedule you can have for, for playing cricket, especially international cricket, shorter, which I don't like. So it's annoying because normally they'd spread it out a little bit more. Mm, but... Yeah. They've had to do it. And I think, if I'm being honest with you, I don't think they needed the India tour this summer. I know they had to play one test, but they've got a few one-day internationals in T20s, which, don't get me wrong, I'm happy because I'm going to those games. But <laughs> the problem is, did we need those games? Not particularly, I don't think. You needed the New Zealand tour and the South Africa tour and you'd have been fine. But yeah, that thing, the India tours come at a bad time. <laughs> I mean, financially, if you're talking about it, you needed. it pretty much more than anything else because India's, an India series gives you that kind of, you know, funding. Like yeah. West Indies cricket, for example, says that if India to West Indies, like they get uh, maximum revenue from those particular series and that's their, uh, you know, major part of their annual revenue is formed by, yes. you know, the India series. So maybe if you're talking about financial uh, outlook of the game, then yes, India series definitely is something that every board would look up to. Hundred percent. I mean, when I go to these games, I will vlog them, and you'll see there will be more Indian fans at these yeah. games than England fans. And this is England. This is not India. I mean, don't get me wrong, bohot, you know, Hindustani here in England. <laughs> but the problem is, this is England. Like this is this is the England cricket team, and this should be England's like like attendance. But the whole stadium will be full of Indian fans, which is amazing. But the point is you'll see what India in, in, in different countries in terms of the cricket means to a lot of people. So, yeah, what you're saying makes sense in terms of the revenue, but I just think they should have maybe avoided this one. 
and then had those two series. But like I said, the hundred, it's a bit of a bit. It's a bit annoying how they've got that as well because it's an extra cricket kind of tournament they didn't really need. But yeah, let's leave that to another day. Okay, so one more. No, let's talk about that today. Let's talk about that today. Yes, so, exactly. what are your thoughts on the hundred? <laughs> Okay, so one more 